Welcome to Capitalism That Works. This is a series co-produced by Global Treehouse and Jesper Kohl. And in today's session, we're going to talk about where growth comes from. It's very interesting. Everybody talks about economic growth, but nobody actually sits down and says, well, what is the key factor that drives the growth potential of an economy? And no, it is not monetary policy. No, it is not fiscal policy. Those policy actions basically um, you know, have an impact on the business cycle, on the short-term cyclical developments of the economy, but structurally, the single most important force for economic growth is entrepreneurship. And you can look at the data, it is a very clear correlation and causation. The higher the share of entrepreneurs in your population, the greater the economic growth potential. And you can see that actually the United States is doing a very good job, lots of entrepreneurs and relatively high growth potential. But you see that Japan is kind of chu to hampa, neither here nor there, kind of in the middle, not bad, but not terribly good. And what you also see is very interesting. You actually see that the best country is actually Israel. And that's very easily explained in common sense terms because Israel is a very small country. It is, you know, water on the one front, desert on the other side, and everybody else around you wants to kill you. So if you're not creative, if you're not innovative, you really don't have a future. And again, doing the statistics, if you raise the share of entrepreneurs in your population by one percentage points, your long-term growth potential goes up by half a percent. That's the true source of economic growth. And here in Japan, you can see this by looking at it in another way, which is who actually creates jobs. Is it startups or is it older established companies? And the data is very clear. It is young companies, it is startups that create all the jobs. Specifically, over the last 10 years, companies less than five years old have created about two million full-time jobs. Companies between six and 10 years old have created an additional half a million jobs, but companies older than 10 years old, on average, have been destroyer of jobs. So again, what Japan needs to do to really fulfill its growth potential is to focus more on entrepreneurship and try and become a real startup nation. And you see, that the corporate animal spirits are really relatively low compared to some of the other countries. When you look at new company formation as a percentage of the total number of companies, here in Japan, about 5% of the total companies outstanding, every year about 5% of new startups are coming through. In the United States, it's more than double, it's about 10%. And even in Germany, it's about 8% much higher. So if there's one thing that Japan needs to do to really attain its status as capitalism that works and a higher growth economy, it is a focus on entrepreneurship. And what's exciting is that it's not the technology, it's not the innovation. It is not the creativity of the Japanese people that is lacking. I mean, there's various ways of looking at this, but if you look at research and development spent, you see that Japan is one of the leaders in the world. When you look at patents outstanding, you also see that Japan is very, very competitive on the global stage. So it's not the intellectual property, it's not the innovation, it's not the creativity, what is lacking is the commercialization. And look at an example of, you know, battery technology. 
Yes, over the last decade, Japan has been the leading producer of high-performance batteries, but there is no brand associated with it. In fact, Mr. Tesla, Elon Musk, has taken the Panasonic batteries and put it into a sexy and well-designed casing, and that's what sells internationally, while Panasonic is just selling these boring gray boxes. So the commercialization of innovation the business development and the marketing, that's where Japan lacks genius and needs you know, further animal spirits. And you can see this, of course, by looking at global car companies. I mean, here we have Toyota. Toyota is one of the best engineering companies in the world, absolutely no question about it. And Toyota is also one of the best run businesses in the world. Quarter after quarter after quarter, it is record high profitability from Toyota. Against that, Tesla basically you know, has a knack for accumulating losses. Every once in a while, they make a little bit of money. But you know, for all intents and purposes, it's still a loss-making company. When you look at the share price, uh, Tesla's share price has literally taken off to Mars, while Toyota's share price is unfortunately meandering around at a very dull level. Why is that? Because Tesla has the dream, has the marketing skill, while Toyota, from that perspective, is absolutely lacking. The interesting thing is that this is about to change. It is about to change because, number one, global competition is getting more intense. It is about to change because here in Japan we have a big leadership transition with a younger group of CEOs and CFOs now taking over, and they have ambitions to actually market and sell their product more aggressively. And then last but not least, we do have internal competition rising with new entrepreneurs, new startups, actually beginning to have a boom here in Japan. And you can see that already over the last six, seven years, new startups funded by venture capital funds have started to really accelerate and take off. And I certainly believe that we are standing at the dawn of a new golden age of Japanese entrepreneurship. Thank you very much for listening. This is Capitalism That Works, a joint production by Global Treehouse and Jesper Kohl. And I very much hope that you will join us for some of the other sessions. Thank you very much.